Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Film Club Podcast, where every month we deep dive into a different aspect of cinemas, director, genre, actor, or franchise. It doesn't matter, because it's always fun at the Film Club. I'm Dean. I'm Becky. And I'm Randy. And this month we're talking about silent films, and this week we're talking about... Sunrise. A song of two humans. And we have a guest. Hello. That I would already be Randy. introduced myself. <laughs> <laughs> With double introductions, Randy. Yeah, All right. I, I mean, I know, I, I know the chair next to you is empty, so are you expecting somebody? <laughs> <laughs> is it the Holy Spirit? What? Are, who's next to you? No, there's no Bible prop this time. Oh, man, why didn't you bring your Bible? You always bring your Bible. <laughs> I don't think it was too relevant to this movie. Uh, it could have been relevant. You could have made it relevant. Oh, you know what? I can make it relevant here. I'm, I'm about to hit you with this. You know... There's the title card near the beginning where they say it's a timeless kind of story, yeah. and you know what else is a timeless story? <laughs> Predator? Uh, Predator, of course. <laughs> yes. But yeah, so we're talking about Sun- Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans, directed by F.W. Murnau, 1927. It's uh, critically lauded from day one, and it's uh, a movie I really, really like. It's did also this, uh, Academy Award winner. Yeah, oh, oh. Oh, it oh. won the which, which Academy Award? Uh, I have it written down. <clears throat> this film won three Academy Awards, actually. It won for Best Actress, it won for Best Cinematography, and it won for... Uh, you gotta read the whole title out? I gotta, I gotta read the whole fucking title out. Or you just can't read your handwriting. Yes. Uh, this one for you, Most Unique and Artistic Picture. Which is basically best, best picture. picture, but not best picture. There was two best pictures, right? Mm-hmm. That year, there was like the most popular and the most artistically relevant, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. There was there was because it came out on the for the first Oscar ceremony. So this was Oscars one, and it was Wings won most outstanding mm-hmm. production, and Sunrise won for most unique and artistic achievement in film. So I think we should bring it back this year. So we have Oppenheimer for Best Picture and then most unique picture goes to Barbie. Barbenheimer I, at Academy Awards. I kind of agree. They I, should bring this this distinction back, honestly. It, but I mean that's a totally other <laughs> I mean, I would agree that they should bring that back because then then Predator would have a Best Picture Oscar, finally. All right. We can't yeah, well, go we, back in time. Yeah, though. we can't retroactively give them out. Don't tell me what you what we can and can't do. I mean the Academy says no <laughs> uh, I see. Uh, but yeah, so we're talking about Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans. I've seen this movie before. Um, we, How many times? I think this is my third time watching it. Um, the first time was when you and me did it for the Film Odyssey podcast in oh, the really? long, long ago. You hadn't watched it before that? No, I hadn't watched it before that, but I watched it twice since then. And this is like the third time. Third time, yes. Math. Um, math. Uh, how many times have you seen it at this point? So this is my second time. This is your second I didn't time. watch it in between the, the two viewings. Okay, but Becky. Yes. This is your first time watching it? It is. Is it? What did you think about it? Well, I know you've been I, waiting. Been itching. I've been, I've been itching. Because I've been wanting you to watch this since like I saw it for the first time. Because I, I thought it was great. And I, mean, I wanted your opinions. You know, back when we recorded on the uh, dead podcast. Um, <laughs> it, it's pretty dead at this point. I, think... I mean, we might revive it but every once in a while. But uh, yeah, it's pretty dead. But we did have it as our number one spot over movies that Dean really likes. Like Goodfellas. Good, this was over Goodfellas. This was over Do the Right Thing. This was... Over all the presidents men, over the masterpiece, Titanic, and Forrest Gump. Well, you're missing Sophie's Choice as well. You love Sophie's Choice, sir. That was really good, but yeah. And I The mean, Sixth it, Sense. It's got to be big if Dean puts it over Titanic. Titanic is one of his favorite movies. I mean, I, without memeing, though, Dean did put it over Goodfellas. I, I did. Goodfellas. And yeah. Dean really <laughs> likes that movie. <laughs> Goodfellas is a, is a fucking masterpiece. Oh, I love Goodfellas, too. But sunrise. Yeah, now we need your opinion. Your you know, initial me and Bean thoughts. still have our opinions, or already have our opinions public. That's true. So I really like the movie. Ah, oh, thank, thank God. God. <laughs> all right, cool. And Dean's like, all right, all right wrap I'm, it up, boys. He's, he's like, I'm going to tear it apart now. He goes, we need someone to be objective about it. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, well, so objectively, it's a great movie. Well, um, but okay, you know. okay. Well, I just want one thing out. So. Last time when me and Dean, you know, recorded on a separate podcast, mm-hmm. which shall not be named, um, we said that the movie is kind of a little difficult to describe without watching it, without like showing any kind of like pictures for it. It's a little bit, it's hard to uh, get across what's so good about the movie. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, it was one of those movies that I was really invested in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with Murnau, he didn't want to show a lot of the cards. So there is no dialogue that you can go off of just, you know, oh, okay, they're talking about this. So you really have to be, 
you know, involved in what's going mm-hmm. on. So yeah, it would be a little bit hard to describe, you know, this wicked city woman that comes in and tries to corrupt this married man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, well, yeah, just kill your wife and, you know, sell the farm and come live with me. Kill your wife and go off to city life. Yeah. Because there's just so much more to that story. Mm-hmm. And I was so happy with how it ended because I was like, oh, God. <laughs> like, please, know, not after all of this. It gets a little topsy-turvy near the end, but I mean, it, you know, we'll get, we'll get there. Yeah. It's interesting because the movie goes from being like this, like, almost Hitchcockian mm-hmm. suspense thriller to this kind of fish out of water romantic comedy to a straight melodrama and Mm -hmm. it kind of moves in and out of those genres at will as the film goes by yeah i mean the film does get pretty uh complicated with its theming throughout the movie just because it changes so much the tone yeah and i think that's the key thing about the movie is tone but we're we're gonna get into that. Should we tell people what the movie's about? I mean, you you kind of did. I mean, she kind of dropped that. a good you... descriptor of it. But I mean, to really you know get to the brass tacks, what the movie's about? It's about a man and a woman and the other woman. The other, the woman. other woman. It's always the other woman. It is. Oh yeah, <clears throat> back and forth. <laughs> Sorry, you you guys just started looking at me and I got scared. <clears throat> so uh, a man is convinced to kill his wife so he may run off with a woman of the city. But when he tries to murder his wife, he backs out and realizes how wrong he is and how much he has betrayed his wife and their love. The man and his wife now try to reconcile and rekindle their love as they explore the city together. But fate may have something different in store for them. Basically. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. dun, dun, dun. You know, it's something weird I didn't realize until I kind of like looked into it today, actually, before mm-hmm. this recording. I know, I said I didn't do any research. I did a little bit. <laughs> Fucking liar. Um, you see this guy you? over here? No, no. Liar. Fake news you give us. <laughs> Fake sorry. news. I'm so sorry. But uh, none of the characters have any names. Yeah, I mm-hmm. looked at that last night. I was trying to read the lady's lips at the end when she's screaming for the man. Uh huh. And I was like, it's Adam or something. Something with an A. Oh, I. so in the credits of the film, they have no names, right? Mm-hmm. But in the script, they do. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Um, I didn't I didn't write down the woman's name because... Because, uh, you know, yeah. they, she doesn't matter. Like, exactly. Of course. Wow, Dean. Well, wow. well no, so I just don't, I just didn't, I didn't write down any of their names. I just remember the guy's name because it was weird. And his name is Innes. Yeah. Mm, really? Yeah. Which is, that's a, that's a new name. That's a Innes? neat one. That's a new name, isn't it? In it. <laughs> Ball water. <laughs> Ball water. Yeah, but yeah, because I because this movie is based off of a short story. Oh, really? Yeah, from I think it's eighteen ninety something is mm-hmm. when the short story was published, and this is based off of that. Um, is and, a short story by the same name? Uh, no, it's called uh, "Tale Out of." Illison or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. It, it's on the Wikipedia article, and I didn't <laughs> think to write it down. I, I mean, you know, something of that nature. That's all the the, the little addendum you need to that. Yeah, yeah so they'll figure it out. It's close enough. Um, but yeah, so it is based off a of pre-existing work, and it's interesting because Murnau was brought onto this, and this was his first film in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. really? Yes, he had made Nosferatu in 1922, um, which huge giant mm-hmm. hit even though it got sued into oblivion and whatever it was really it'd popular be like that sometimes it'd be like that um but he also released uh films like the last laugh um he did a version of faust as mm-hmm. well that all both of them super critically acclaimed mm-hmm. i believe the last laugh even now people say that's his best movie fun fact that movie has zero title cards because he was like i don't need them to make a movie <laughs> Because he was, you know, baller like that. <laughs> um, but Fox Studios, they brought him over to, you know, make his movie in Hollywood, right? And he would only do it if he got full creative control. Okay. And that's what they gave him. And he makes Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans. But that's kind of the lead up to this. And it's kind of sad because this movie bombs. And then... Oh, really? Yeah. Even this... though it's critically acclaimed. But, I mean, I guess, it, you know, yeah. not with the audiences. No. Oh, yeah. The critics loved it. Audience didn't show up for it, and about three years after this, he dies. Oh, really? Car crash mm. at 41. Whoa. Yes, so Mer- this is one of his last three movies, mm-hmm. three or four movies, Um, and he made, I believe, 20 films in his lifetime, and half of them are lost. They don't exist anymore. We can't mm-hmm. find them. 
which includes a version of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde that stars Bella Lugosi as Mr. Hyde, and I want that in my life uh, so no, fucking bad. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to no. try and <laughs> ham-fist it into here. Well, it's also, it's it's Bella Lugosi as Mr. Hyde and Conrad the Veidt as Dr. Jekyll, Whoa. otherwise known as Sizar from Canada Dr. Caligari, yeah. mm-hmm. and I'm like also like the main Nazi villain from Casablanca, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I need that in my life, but that doesn't exist anymore, so... Uh, prove me. it. Go find it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll go to the salt mines of uh, South America and I'll find it. That's where they found uh, Metropolis. Did they really? Yeah. It would fun more you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's kind of the lead up that got Sunrise to be made. But the movie itself is, I still kind of find it hard to describe because it does, it, it opens with the whole thing of the man and the woman from the city are already like mid-affair, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like, she comes over for, like, a weekend getaway, weekend vacation, and she just stays and hooks up with him. Mm -hmm. And he's, I don't even know if he really likes the woman from the city or if he just wants to get out of farm life. No, I think what's happening is that, you know, he kind of sprung up this relationship with this woman. And it's one of those things, you know, you kind of see this happen a lot, is that he's happy when he's with her Mm -hmm. but then when he has to go back to his regular life he the guilt fills him you know and then it's like his the only relief from the guilt is when he's back with the woman again Mm. yeah and i mean it's kind of it's sad because you could just see that the wife loves him Mm -hmm. and i think it is just a thing of convenience you're like oh yeah got married really young we had this baby we're running this farm i'm bored but I still love you guys. Mm-hmm. So you can see the confliction there, but it's just, you know, completely t- goes, you know, 180 with, we'll just kill her. Well, you know, I mean, it's that's, like, you that's, know, that's a city woman's, uh, it's her idea. Th- that's why it's just kind of like, what? I, I also like how the movie is visually, sh- visually shows you the city woman, right? Because mm-hmm. the first time we see her, she's in like the black negligee, mm-hmm. and she obviously looks like not of this podunk almost like bavarian village on mm-hmm. the on like this lakeside yeah which... we see the wife you know she's in her apron because she's cooking dinner mm-hmm. and you know she's dressed modestly because she's at home you know she doesn't mm-hmm. need to be you know dressed to the nines and you have the city woman slinking around outside whistling for him like mm-hmm. like I... damn lady take that back to the city we don't need that shit here in the village <laughs> i i love when she whistles to him and i love the, like the imaging of it because it's the whole thing where like it she, she's doing it and she's in like the tall grass and the camera is moving and panning and he's entering the grass and it's like oh she's a snake in the grass she's yeah. calling for him she's mm-hmm. pining for him right and um but you, you might enjoy this so that lake um i yes. i looked into it it's actually not on the studio that's lake arrowhead it oh, is. really that is lake, oh, arrowhead. lake arrowhead yeah and um that that was a trip sweet. you know they have lake arrowhead they have big bear and then I was trying to figure out where they filmed the big carnival scene. Mm-hmm. That was actually something they built on a set. On oh, no, like a soundstage? Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, you know, of all of those, I would have thought, you know, maybe the carnival would have been something like, oh, okay, that's going on. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. Because that w- that's an impressive set. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a much set. larger mm-hmm. set than you think it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Lake Arrowhead is very beautiful. Yeah, well, that's pretty neat. I, I kind of like that. You know, I totally thought that they just did that in like one of the uh, like giant pools. That one they of make the lagoons. At these. Yeah. 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 I mean, you actually went to Paramount um, not too long ago. Yeah, just you... last weekend. And I got to see where they split the Red Sea and uh, the Ten Commandments, which was super cool. <laughs> Did you freak out? I was like, oh, oh my god, they're actually going to show how they did it. Oh, it was it was super sweet. Yeah, one of my favorite movies. Yeah, but it is interesting just because it's like you know, looking at this movie, it's it's interesting to see how much they went on location because movies back then usually they were shot like in a studio or in mm-hmm. a back lot, right? Like yeah, how I... many westerns were shot just on? Eh, it's a dirt lot about six blocks outside of Warner Brothers Studios. Like that's just where they shot a bunch uh, of movies. Spawn Ranch. Spawn Ranch. Yeah. Yeah, I totally thought that like ninety nine percent of the movie was in a soundstage, and then when I learned that like the lake stuff, that's on like on location. That's pretty cool. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Um. So where so where do you guys want to want to really get it going into this movie? Where do we want to start? I mean, I I kind of like the the effects in this movie. Honestly, even though it's such an early early movie, the effects are really good and some of them i've seen like i saw done in this movie and i'm like i don't think anybody's ever done them this well since especially the superimposition the man mm-hmm. sitting in his uh in his bed the and literal he, the best shot of this entire film yes he's sitting in his bed 
and he's thinking about the uh, what the the woman from the city has told him to kill his wife as you know she, his wife is in the other room or she's like feeding chickens or something yeah mm-hmm. she's doing you know the she's I, doing the housework she's doing the i am the good character of this movie yes look how mm-hmm. pure and wholesome i am pretty much I ain't that whore from the city <laughs> and he's kind of wrenching with himself with the idea and it's like superimposed the woman like uh brushing up against his ear or putting her hand on his chest and i don't think i've seen any movie do that as well as this one Yeah, it's also a thing where it is such a very unique use of something only film can do Mm -hmm. because it's all it's purely like a visual image, right? Like, oh, and it's, you know, think about that on like a storytelling level. We're now sitting there like, how the hell are we going to show that? Oh, he's like, like, he's conflicted, but he's like lusting after this woman. But it's like he's also guilty about it. Oh, we'll we'll impose her image over it, but she'll be this ghostly figure, and we can tell like he's thinking of all like those um, beautiful central moments with the woman from the city, and that's what's driving him. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things where you know you a lot of people say that it's very hard to adapt from uh, literature into movies is the inner conflict but in the character. You know how much can you show without just literally having a monologue over everything, yeah. being like I felt this way. <laughs> You know, but he did it perfectly there. And I think it's something that's like really hard to replicate because nowadays it would look either like a literal ghost yeah. or the person is literally there. Yeah. You know, it, it, the the effect isn't quite the same. And it was something that we talked about in Metropolis last week because, um, what was that? Fritz Long did the same thing where you're just basically um, doing a double exposure. Mm-hmm. So you film it and then you put the film back in the camera and you know you hope for the best and you shoot over it and sometimes Mm -hmm. it works sometimes it doesn't and with this movie it really worked because you really get that emotion of you know what do i do Mm -hmm. while it not looking kind of you know weird or you know she is a ghost oh my god is is this really happening Mm -hmm. i i also love it when they're when the two of them are like lying in the grass in like Mm -hmm. the field right and they're like think about oh what we can do when we go off and it shoot and it like Above them, the entire skyline transforms into visions of the city. And it mm-hmm. looks like something out of, like, Man with a Movie Camera, where it's these, like, 15, 16, 17 different shots, like, all Even, melted um, together. Dissolved. Singing in the Rain. You know, all these big movies where they show these cuts of, you know, lights and people dancing. And it's like, oh, okay, I see, you know, you got the reference from this movie. See, talk about, like, references, right? Because we watched um, The Artist last year. Last right? year. And that's kind of what spawned us. Oh, we got to do a silent movie month, mm-hmm. right? But they credited, like, Sunrise. Oh, we watched Sunrise, and that was a movie that we drew inspiration from to make. Mm -hmm. And when we talked about the artist and how, oh, this is, like, a really inventive and interesting way. It's a love letter to Hollywood, what have you. But that cinema really got held back for, like, 10, 20 years because of sound. And it's Mm -hmm. interesting to watch Sunrise being like, oh, they were, like, just figuring out how to, like, how to masterfully tell stories Mm -hmm. visually and there's a little bit of sound yeah there is it's not a silent movie it is a synchronized sound production Mm, yes with movie tone Mm -hmm. Uh, the beauty of movie tone which is the same thing they used to do the jazz singer which that's why i think this movie probably didn't do too well at the box office because guess what came out a week after this movie's release the jazz singer yeah yeah Yeah. i can see how that would kind of uh Put a little damper on the A little things. bit, a little the, bit. The first talkie, also the first musical, mm-hmm. had Al Jolson su- in it. I was surprised with the budget of this movie. 200000 to make, and it only made 121000 back. Uh, I could not I could not find the budget anywhere for this movie. I found it. Of course, Well, of course <laughs> you found it. You're good at this game. Yeah, <laughs> it's a thing. But yeah, like, also two hundred grand in, like, 1927. 26, 26 yeah. yeah. That's that's a shit ton of that's money. That's a yeah. lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's why I'm wondering if a lot of it went to permits to like you know be over in Big Bear Arrowhead. Hey. Oh, no, no, I have to say that probably most of it either went into editing or into the set for the carnival. Yeah, it's a big set. That's a big set. Or trying to make the storm happen. Oh yeah, <laughs> it that is, storm is something. It is it is wild how the storm looks when they're near like the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, yo, I don't. That's got. Please tell me that's in a pool, right? I really hope they're not just out on a lake and then there's this giant tugboat just pumping water at them. No, Murnau's like, finally, we got a storm. I've been waiting for this all year. Get in, the boat. Yes. Get in there. Get in the boat. Go, go. Uh, 
But yeah, the um, just how the movie looks, it is just so like innovative mm-hmm. in a way that I'm like, I don't, because you know we watched uh, the Gold Rush, right? Mm-hmm. And we watch Metropolis, and you've seen, like, the dozen Chaplin movies. We've seen a lot of silent films, right? Yeah. None of them look like this. No. Like, not even just, like, none of them look like this. The cameras don't move like this. And that's something a lot of people noted, is this movie is one of the earliest films to extensively use tracking shots. Yes, I thought mm-hmm. that was really interesting when they did the the tracking shot, where it, like, pans over to the women when they're in the, like, the marsh, mm-hmm. or whatever it yeah. is, where it, it's tracking him, and then it's from his point of view, and then it's looking at the woman, not from his point of view anymore. And it has the fucking moon just perfectly in the mm-hmm. background. And I'm like, oh, so this is what an image painted on celluloid looks like. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I, I thought that was really cool and like really um, innovative for them. And also the one where it follows the woman to his house, that like tracking shot yeah. through mm-hmm. the, the little village. Also like the way the camera moves when they're like on the water, mm-hmm. you know, because it's like the boat. I, okay when the boat's like drifting through the water and he's like oh baby and he puts the you know the um uh-huh. the coat over mm-hmm. him and i'm like that's a really like the camera is moving parallel to the boat and the boat's obviously like on an actual lake so they have to keep it steady and i yeah. notice the camera's not shaking so yeah. is it just tracking on like the edge of the the lake or is it on like an actual boat and they're just moving along it's really i don't know the movie looks yeah, really actually, cool actually i don't know how they did that now that you brought it up I just put it on a crane and we'll just maybe put it on a back of the truck or something i don't know mm. all i know is i love the boat that goes by with the people that have the fire and they're dancing yes yes the barge <laughs> i saw that, <laughs> that and i'm like my favorite. what the <laughs> like they're just having a good time yeah dude oh <laughs> uh, but yeah um so i guess there's a few th- neato things about sunrise that i wanted to know what so the main guy we talked about him the mm-hmm. man the man uh the husband the husband your uh your 1920s ryan gosling apparently he straight up looks like ryan gosling you can't like convince ryan me gosling. otherwise no. but he starts the movie tempted by the woman of the city basically he's gonna like leave his wife murder her well he's gonna sell the farm murder the wife and probably, go off to live in the city probably abandon his child too most likely i mean you know she's got grandparents or something i don't know well you know and through the movie, he basically is like, I'm so guilty. I'm sorry about this. My question is, do you think he's redeemed by the end of the movie? Has he redeemed himself by the end of the movie? Well, so we got to explain to the audience here how the whole almost killing your wife thing goes. Like, how that kind of goes about. So basically, the woman is like, well... Oh, and also, this is like one of the coolest effects in the movie, too. You just fucking love this. It's so good. This title card. Where um, the lady is like, well, she could drown. And I then love when the, they show her over and over again just falling out of the falling boat. Falling into the boat, yeah. <laughs> him thinking about pushing her into the into the water. Murnau's like, we gotta do it another time. And she's like, you threw me into the water 14 times. Mm-hmm. Another one. It's mm-hmm. really funny. And the, the title card, like, you know, goes as if it's, like, water dripping mm-hmm. down, which is a super cool effect. But, um, you know, so the, the man goes uh, goes about preparing. He prepare, He's going to capsize the boat with her in it and, uh, you know, swim off to safety with his, like, uh, flotation device or whatever. Little little raft of reeds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like that touch in there. She's like, yeah, you capsize, but you make sure you have this on hand so you can float to safety. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, She's like, done this before. <laughs> She's done this oh. before. <laughs> you know also, when they keep yeah. repeating the title cards uh, where... I think it's the grandmother or the babysitter. And she's mm-hmm. like, you know, they were so happy and childlike and carefree. They keep repeating that card over and yeah. over. It made me think of Dateline where they're like, you know, they were such a happy couple. You know, <laughs> high school sweethearts, a family. They had it all until it wasn't. Oh, no. And I was bah. like, Keith Morrison, we need you to narrate this movie. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I mean, it it does kind of come off like, oh, we're this is like a Dateline episode. This where it's a, like, oh, a she- horror movie. The well, old- at the beginning, yeah, it's basically like a horror movie. You're you're you feel like you're about to watch this man go through murdering his wife to leave with the woman that he's with. It's like it's Hitchcockian, yeah. But yeah. he also, you know, like transforms. It's like you see him like kind of turning into uh, Mr. Hyde. Yeah, he's, he's just getting kind of- all hunchback. Mm-hmm. He's very solemn and sunken in his look. Also, the way he when he's on the boat, right, and he like approaches her, how the whole boat like shifts, like boom, mm-hmm. boom, boom. Yeah, he's walking like he's Frankenstein. Yeah, and I found out like Murnau made a note when he did that of we're gonna fill your shoes with lead, so mm-hmm. it's all so you're heavy when you're walking, so the boat moves, and also so you can feel the weight of every movement you make as you're approaching your wife to kill her, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like. 
oh, that's just a cool level to mm-hmm. like for that performance because he looks like he's he's Frankenstein, yeah. right? Yeah. He's giant lurching going over to her, and I don't know how big Jane again or is. She's probably like three foot nothing, but yeah. this guy looks yeah, seven probably. feet. Mm-hmm. But this guy looks seven feet tall when they're on that boat and that angle they're using. Yeah, so they he rows the boat out into the middle of the lake. You know, gets up, he approaches his wife, he holds his hands out as if he's gonna strangle her or throw he's her about away, to choke her bitch ass, choke the bitch out, and then decides, Nah, man, this this ain't it. This my wifey. This I can't my do wifey. It. I can't be doing this. Uh, Also, if Dean could go back in time to give Predator an Oscar, I think we have to go back in time to get the the St. Bernard, or not St. Bernard, the German Shepherd. Oh, the German Shepherd from this movie? Yes. My heart broke. That is the goodest of boys. That is the Uh, goodest of boys. The German Shepherd chases after the boat as they're pedaling away. And he and that dog is like, no, don't go. He's going to kill you. And he's like, I'll take care of you. Not the mama. That was the goodest of boys. The greatest of boys. He deserves mm-hmm. an Oscar. He deserves an honorary Oscar. And they pedal away from this uh, this little... Um, marital mi- dispute. Marital dispute in the water. <laughs> just a little just Babe, a little I didn't mean it. I, 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 mean, I wasn't really... You think I'm really going to choke you Babe, out of the water? I was just playing. I was just playing. It's a prank, yo. It's, it's a, prank. a prank. It's just a prank. And uh, so after this prank, he... Uh, Chases her on shore. Well, they he quickly goes to shore, and uh, not in the same direction. He goes to shore, like still towards the city, which is kind of strange. It, I, don't, I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, don't worry about it. We won't. We won't worry about that part. But goes to shore. She runs off, what like you do when your husband was like, eh, well, I was thinking about killing you. <laughs> but uh, you that's got to be the most awkward like boat ride because what? Because you know it just cuts there, right? I want to imagine in it real time. It took like 10 more minutes. It was 10 more minutes and she's just there like, are we going to talk about this? Like, nope. Nope, babe. We're not going to talk about this. Just wait till we get to shore and then we'll talk about it. And, uh, you know, she runs off. He runs off after her. I mean, she ain't going nowhere. She's like three foot nothing. Yeah. This um, is also another great tracking shot where it tracks her through, um, through like the area to, when she gets onto the train, mm-hmm. the trolley or whatever. Yeah. And he chases after her. I also like how there's just this trolley that goes out to the middle of bum fuck nowhere. It's that probably they going up. between like two cities here, yeah. man. Like, like a train would, you know, like, you know, trains. You've you like, got what? people that live in the mountains, you know, you really expect them to, you know, conquer the mountains every time. Oh, I forgot to pick up the bread last time. All right. I'll be back in like <laughs> Grab five to seven days. Grab my hiking stick and my pack. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, Frodo was able to do it. Bilbo <sighs> was able to do it. It's There's precedent. But this isn't, you know, the Shire. I, we don't know. This they is Big Bear. Oh, real yeah. quick. Uh, one of our customers at work went to Hobbiton recently and sent us some pictures. Really? Dean is so jealous. You have no idea how jealous I am. So when it's are you cool and Greg fun. going? Don't, don't, don't ask questions. All right. <laughs> I almost got to shut up, Randy. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> they uh, they make it into the city, and the uh, the wife, you know, she she can't really escape him, Mm-mm. and she's also <laughs> so so meek that it's mm-hmm. like she's terrified of him, but she yeah. also needs him to guide her through the city. Well, and, I mean, and she, she is she like kind of gives up for forgiveness. She kind of gives up on getting away from him, mm-hmm. and you know, what is she to do? She thinks this man like could kill her at any moment. And so she just kind of accepts her fate of, yeah. you know. She's a marked woman. Mm-hmm. And so he leads her through the city into like a just a shop to sit down, you know, get a bite to eat, I guess, after you just tried to murder your wife. Here, take the, this, Hungry, you know, basket man. of bread, Fucking please. starving after that. <laughs> yeah, I, was this before or after he like bought her flowers? And he... It was before that. Yeah. This is like the first like gesture he shows mm-hmm. to her. He buys her some bread at the little um, corner store. Yeah, he's he's trying his best to be like, sorry, babe. Yo, sorry, babe. <laughs> My bad. My, My bad. bad. You know, I and didn't. It's... I'm sorry. I was, you know, stepping out on you <laughs> with that other woman, and uh, you know, kind of trying to murder your ass and sell off the farm. <sighs> And then ditch our kid. I, uh, Did I mention that? Ayo, you know. We... Need, need that post-nut clarity? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm need sorry. that yeah. post-nut clarity. Oh, oh, no. I mean, that's. I feel that's what the movie really revolves around. But uh, besides the point. No. So it... the movie re- well, I mean, he is guilty after he meets the... Anyway. Yeah, we'll get back to it. So, that. you know, he tries to show her these gestures, buys her the bread, the flowers. Um, she is not taking any of it. Yeah, she's not taking any of it until they see across the way there's a wedding going mm-hmm. on. And he takes her in there with him and kind of has like a total breakdown as the priest is like uh, saying these vows to the man and the woman. 
mm-hmm. to the man he's like you know do you promise to protect her and mm-hmm. care for her and it's like you know yeah you're so stuck in your daily routine but he forgot you know well this is the reason why we're in this together because mm-hmm. i promise to do all these things for you and i i love that we see that break in him that he's mm-hmm. just kind of like i've been conflicted and i i have to be in church to finally see that yeah this was a truly horrible sign mm-hmm. he, he needs some jesus in his life oh yeah <laughs> jesus <laughs> I mean, it's also interesting because the movie also shows us flashbacks of them when they were like younger and mm-hmm. together, and it's like totally different world and vibe when you see those images, right? Well, because the the man has been in this kind of like the same mood the whole way through, where he's just so dark and brooding, and mm-hmm. you can tell he's like really torn up inside about everything. Mm-hmm. And then the flashback, he's just the most carefree life's great you know sun is shining type of person and then i think it's like oh the money lenders came and they took the farm or the oxen or whatever because there is a flashback where it's like oh this is the turn when Mm -hmm. he like when things started falling apart for him Well, because that's after he meets the the woman from the city he's buying her things with you know the farm Mm. (sighs) same old story Mm mm-hmm you get the side piece, start spending too much, and where did our money go? Bitch, I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> we got a crooning on this one. <laughs> He's like, I didn't bring props, but I brought my pipes. <laughs> I brought my pipes. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, and, yeah, but, you know, the come to Jesus moment, they finally see it, and, you know, she's like, you know what, maybe there is some hope for you, even though you actually almost killed me. And he's like, I mean, maybe. did he almost kill her? He didn't even lay hands on her. Like, he just hey. saw the, she saw the look in his eyes. And I'm just saying. And the hands extended. Did, it was like, oh. He, I mean, he it, pulled I a mean, knife on a guy later. He just choked a bitch later, you know. Well, does, I mean, yeah. he already had choked a bitch before when um the first time that the lady suggested he, he yeah, should kill he his does, wife. He does choke he her. He fucking chokes the bitch. He was like, like, hey, hey, well, hey. He's like, kill my wife, never, you evil whore. And then she starts like kissing on him, and then he's like, well, maybe. I mean, maybe, maybe after that, a little, maybe, little, maybe, maybe not evil, but you whore. Maybe, maybe after a little sucky, sucky, I'll be convinced. <laughs> oh lord. Um. So they see that, and they're going through like the rekindling of the romance. Um. I they be- pretend, you know, they are the ones that got married. Mm-hmm. They're gonna go take pictures together. It's like the renewing their vows, basically. Yeah. Yes. Also, I this is when it goes from like the thriller melodrama to. The rom-com. To the rom-com. Mm-hmm. When they go and take the pictures, uh, what is it? Do they knock the head off the statue or they no, think no, they the, did? The statue was already head and armless and yeah. they knock it over. And, and then they're, they're panicking. Like, oh my God, the <laughs> statue has no head and arms. They look all over for them. They, they start, obviously don't exist. They make a little head and put it on there. Or they find like a squeaky toy and put <laughs> it on top of it. No, like the photographer is like, that's pretty lit. That's the best thing I've seen in here all day. <laughs> oh, they go to um, they go to the carnival which oh, well, is well first they go to the barber shop which is what, what a great scene in the movie where he, she's like we can't take pictures you're too scruffy to take pictures <laughs> and he's like but but babe my, my shadow my, my, my shadow <laughs> So yeah, they go to the barber shop and he's getting you know done up and uh, what is it? Uh, the, the barber shop lady comes over and it's like, "Hey, big boy, you want anything?" And the wife's like, "Oh hell no! Oh hell no! I'll choke a bitch!" <laughs> and then you know he finally is like, "No, no, leave me alone!" And then we have the flip where the guy's bothering the wife and mm-hmm. he's like, "I'm about to cut a bitch." Uh, oh, he yeah. whips a knife out in this barber shop and he's like back the fuck off my woman he's like yo dude i was just trying to be well, nice the, the guy ta- like takes the well so the husband has bought the wife flowers previously mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. wife's sitting down in the barbershop holding the flowers and this guy comes up and he's like Ooh, you look like a nice little piece of ass um <laughs> was, was, was that what he sounded like <laughs> yeah exactly and he, he grabs one of the flowers and pins it into his collar like Ooh, look you know and then the the husband finally gets his uh he finally he's like trying to get up from the barber and the barber keeps putting him back down and then he finally like puts his hand on the barber's chest being like I'll, I'll be back we, we're done here and then uh goes over and whips out his knife and he's it looks like he's about to fucking uh gut this man and then he cuts <laughs> off the flower from his collar it's pretty good i'm just saying i i wonder if the wife knew when she looked in her husband's eyes being like that's the same eyes you gave my father when you killed him. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it's the same eyes you gave me when you almost killed me. <laughs> like 20 minutes ago. Like, oh, no. Yeah, like literally a half hour ago. <laughs> L- literally a half hour ago. You know, before the woman from the city came by, you know you almost killed me, right? Right? I want to imagine 30, 30 years later. 
babe. It's been 30 years. I didn't mean it. I'm didn't sorry. Mean it. It's like, Remember you that one time I bought you the, the flowers and the bread and the champagne? That I was, thought, it was you know, the same cool day. Now. That was the same day? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my bad. I don't remember it that way. <laughs> He's like, I, I, you know, I did so much. <laughs> it's basically him trying to buy forgiveness. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so they. Well, I mean, actually, you could like uh, point to the fact that he tried to buy forgiveness and it didn't work. And then they had the true like emotional thing in the church. God had to step actually... in and be like, son, sit down. Money's not going to work on this woman. He he couldn't buy forgiveness. He had to open up emotionally. Oh, you know what? That does tie in, you know, because he kept buying things for the uh, for the uh, woman mm-hmm. from the city and was like, oh, this must work on my wife, too. But no, no, no. He thought he learned the secrets to all women. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> you open, your, you open I... your checkbook and they're happy. My mistress is happy when I give her things. The wife automatically should be happy. What do you I mean, mean you're not happy? Aren't you happy when Dean whips out his wallet and buys you things? <laughs> eh, no, there's still shame and guilt there when he buys you things. <laughs> I'm like, boo! It's 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 band aids here. They're they're for they're for your elbow. And it's she's okay. Like, I'll bleed to death. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, and then eventually they go to the carnival. And the carnival is um where it gets like super rom commy. Very rom commy. There's the little drunk piglet. Mm-hmm. It's adorable. Oh, I love the it's so good. It's so sweet. Uh it I think that's the thing. The comedy in it isn't like like um Chaplin or Keaton Schlapstick. or whatever or slapsticky. It's very like, oh, that's funny. It's it's that kind of humor. It's like mm-hmm. cutesy humor. Um, but I like how, you know, pig you know gets out of its pen and he's like chasing around and she's like oh blah, blah, blah. and you know they catch catch the pig and they're like oh we're gonna have like a dance or whatever and they put on the peasant dance mm-hmm. and she's like all into it and he's like no i don't want to do it i ain't no peasant and she's like yeah you a peasant so let's dance and <laughs> and they have this whole choreographed like, I dance i don't want to dance <laughs> exactly well that i like that moment because that feels like a layer to his character and why i'm like oh maybe he didn't want the woman from the city he just wanted out of his situation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right he wanted to go to the city i think he's ashamed of you know being his the farmer life. the simple yeah. life yeah and i think that's an interesting character moment for him in that in that scene but then you know they break it down mm-hmm. as well, you I mean, do what else are you going to do on the farm once the animals are tend to and fed you work on your choreographed dances so if uh, of course. one time we get out and there's music we have our song to dance to, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we wow the audience, and everybody claps. They do, well, just like it's a Reddit post, <laughs> and everyone. <laughs> and they didn't even get complimentary champagne after all that. True, the piglet. They got upcharged on that <laughs> yeah. champagne. That's some <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> oh. um, that did look like a fucking nice restaurant, though. That place looked real pretty. It did look real nice. Mm. We love those nice fake restaurants. Exactly, mm-hmm. and all that was there was bread and wine. Perfect. That's Perfect. And he could, and the guy could barely afford it. <laughs> barely. He had to have his wife chip in. Choo, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honey, how how many pieces of bread did you get? <laughs> God, God damn it. God. Bread don't go on trees. How you stay that skinny with all that bread? <laughs> Jesus. She is tiny. I'm not sure if we mentioned it like four times already. Yes. She's, she's a very a tiny, tiny woman. lady. It, which which I don't know if it's a thing where it's like because you know how in movies they'll like oh they'll like put the guy in the apple box mm-hmm. or they'll like make the door frames larger or whatever mm-hmm. so the girl looks smaller. I don't I don't know how much movie trickery they did, but she's a a very petite woman, and he doesn't seem that big either. There's people in the in the movie that are taller than him. Also, there's one like I don't know who it is, but there's like a, a guy that walks past the camera that's got to be like seven feet tall, and I think that's Murnau. <laughs> oh, okay. I have I the think. answer for you guys. Uh. She was only five feet tall. God was, damn. She was tiny. Matt's Look taller than her. <laughs> well, Matt's at home. Yes! I'm finally taller there's than someone. One. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she definitely looks tiny in this movie. I oh. mean, I think that if they like made this movie nowadays, they'd like upscale her a little bit, you know? I, maybe. Maybe a, a schmidge. Maybe, but I mean, to No, no, have they just her... get Tom Cruise to play opposite of her. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, of the... course. <laughs> yeah. There was no Apple box. Dude was 5'10". Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that makes yeah, sense. He's that like about, a foot that, taller, right? Yeah, that checks out. Uh, but, um, so, after, you know, the beautiful restaurant, then they're like, oh, we're gonna, you know... Th- this is the moment where it's like, is he? Is this where he's like fully redeemed himself when they're on the boat ride back? Mm-hmm. Right, the storm kicks in. 
he gives her the reeds when the boat overturns so that she can, you know, be saved or whatever, and he'll, like, swim to shore. Well, he doesn't even just give them to her. He, he ties like, it to he her. He ties, the, there's, like, two bundles both as well, and he ties tied. both of them to her. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, what a sweetie. He would never do it. He would never hurt anybody. <laughs> God. I, can, I can fix him. Even I can though fix him. early in the day he tried to kill me, but now he's trying I mean, to save me. It's okay. Was, yeah. We Gucci. Ah. Uh, and they tie, you know, the, the reeds and stuff to her, and, you know... The storm's raucous or whatever, and he watches up to shore, and we get, like, a really great shot of her, like, drifting through the water as the mm-hmm. reeds are starting to, like, fall out of the bundle. The bundle. And, they, like, I love how it stays on her. She drifts away, and it's just the reeds in the water, and I'm like, oh, is, oh, shit. is she gonna drown? Because she's, like, passed out, right? Yeah. I also love how through the like most of the storm, she is just passed out asleep. I know. The water's yeah, overturning, yeah, I mean- it's flipping, and she's like... She's mm, a little, you know, snockered on that wine or that champagne. She's that champagne. Oh, <laughs> champagne. Baby. Uh, I mean, was it just me that was kind of like, bro, you bought her, you know, flowers, bread, wine. You guys couldn't, like, rent a room there for the night? Like, well, let's hop in the boat. Oh, uh, bro, they were broke. Didn't you see the man ran out at the champagne place? She had to bust her, like, secret stash out. And also, <laughs> and, and she, she has so, a secret stash. She was also so can't happy, trust too. That bitch. She's I like, should have choked her. She's <laughs> like, I got you, fam. He's like, what? Also, that, like, what? She she's got a side man. Oh my god! That's the sequel. That's the sequel. It's sundown. Oh, sunset. No. The ballad of two humans. The ballad <laughs> of Ricky Bobby. The ballad of Ricky Bobby. And um, if you ain't first, you're last. But yeah, and this <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. But yeah, and then you know we get to the whole like um search parties going out, and they're like, oh, we found the reeds, she's dead, and blah blah blah, or they found like a torn off piece of her dress yes. or something. And then he's like, oh no, oh my god. And the woman for the city is like... Oh, she's like watching like a vulture in a tree. She's like a fucking gargoyle <laughs> peering down upon the, the, the weak. And she's like, he went through with it. Yes. She does the fucking like Sith Lord. Uh, there's no... She doesn't say anything to me. I know. <laughs> I, I felt it though. I felt Visually, I heard noises. Okay. You, you know how that... She thing? got like the smile across her face like the Grinch. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, she goes over to the man and she's like, ah, oh, we did it. We can finally be together. And she's like, no, you ruined my life. And she starts choking her. Right? Just, he's just like, choking if, this bitch. He's, he's basically <laughs> like, you know, if it wasn't for you, my wife would still be alive. And now you're not going to be alive either. <laughs> and then they're like, hey, she's alive. She's alive. We found her in the cove. And she's he's like, alive, oh, Ennis or whatever. The Ennis, name whatever. Is. And he's like, oh, she is awesome. And just throws this woman on the ground out of frame, out of the movie. <laughs> no, no. He's, like, he's like, let me it's get one or two that. more squeezes in there. You know, he and like kind of just, he doesn't even toss her. He just kind of let, like lets go. And she just crawls out of frame, <laughs> out right out of frame, out of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, you fool, how can you tear these people apart? I just, I just, I love that though, how she just crawls out of frame. <laughs> It, it is it, it is it is great and the last image we have is her in like the back of the car like driving off and she looks all mad you and mean pouty. the back of the carriage mm-hmm. with all her shit yes the back of the carriage Let's send that bitch back to the city and, <laughs> and we get the man and the the wife and they're they're in the bed and they're in the bed and you know she's like oh you know i'm I'm so like perturbed and you know, oh man, I can't believe I almost died today twice. And <laughs> and he's like, Baby, I love you and you know, oh it's you know, beautiful, happy ending, all that mm-hmm. stuff. But oh, the, can I talk about real quick, you know, like, her hair when she's in the bed yeah, that, after she almost yeah. drowned. long, flowing <laughs> She looks like, you know, a painting of, like, Guinevere or some shit, you know? Uh, that was Murnau because Janet Gaynor had, like, really beautiful hair. And he's like, well, we need her to stand out or be different from the city woman. He's mm-hmm. like, so we got to put that hair up tight where it's just, you know... Oh, she's kind of, you know, meek and boring. She's to look got at. the mom bun they're going. Like, mm-hmm. They're like, we can't have her with these flowing locks and be like, what the hell is he thinking? You know, mm-hmm. beautiful hair. And you have the city woman with her, you know, her 20s, you know, black, little flapper, flapper, girl flapper girl cut. This just like, yeah, I, I love that touch at the end. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, she's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the meme. <laughs> well, like, the, took her glasses off and like, you're the, beautiful. <laughs> the, the one lady, she looks like she has like the same hair as that one lady from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. <sighs> I, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'll, I'll roll with it. But yeah, we got the, we got the meme, even from the 20s. <laughs> she just got her hair. Wow. You're, you're so beautiful. beautiful. How could I have almost killed you a day ago? <laughs> <laughs> almost choked that bitch. Choked that bitch. Oh, God. But then, you know, but the question 
is he redeemed at the end? Has his actions made up for almost murdering his wife? Oh, uh, well, she forgave him, so I can forgive him. <laughs> <laughs> she can fix him, thus I can fix him. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, hey, man, I know it's a movie and all, and I'm supposed to analyze it, but hey, ain't none of my business. You know, if they happy, you know, that's on them, they good, you know. I mean, I think he's redeemed, but again... She can hold that over for the rest of her life. You know, <laughs> you're, he you're starts just like, acting my up. My spite knows no bounds. It doesn't. You know, he starts to. You know, a little bit of lip. Remember that one time you tried to kill me on the lake? Yeah, and he's like, "Yeah, do you remember?" <laughs> <laughs> I do remember. Now go get the wood from outside. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh God, it's, I mean, it, it's just the thing where I'm like, I feel like. Honestly, I think the movie is just like so well like made by that point. I'm just like I almost for I kind of forgot he tried to kill her earlier I in mean, this film. Yeah, honestly, there's like a whole like thirty minute long or more. I don't know how long it is. Section of a rom com afterwards. It's a huge. There's a whole like character arc with like kind of both of them throughout mm-hmm. the movie, and it's like I don't know if he's redeemed himself. It's like a weird. It's like a weird question. It's just like man, I feel better about him at the end of the movie. I think I still more... think he he probably killed a person though. He he's probably killed people. Oh yeah. I mean, right. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's <laughs> no more questions. Re- yeah. I think he's more redeemable just in the actions of, you know, how he takes care of her, you know, covers her in the boat and ties both of the reeds to her. Mm-hmm. It's like you see that it's not, you know, uh, I feel guilty. It's, you know, no, I actually do love you and I do want to take care of you and make sure that you're safe. Him stretching out over the water with the lantern when yeah. they're on the search party. Really trying to make sure that, you know, if she's at arm's length, you know, he can see her, grab her. Which also just looks cool as hell, by mm-hmm. the way. That too. Him like dipping the lantern in the mm-hmm. water because he's so leaning forward. Mm-hmm. I mean, it it, lo- it just looks cool. It's a cool effect. Uh, um, but yeah, so, the you know, now, now that we've gone through the whole movie, I gotta ask, do you think the tone of this movie is like weird how much it jumps from one tone to another do you think it flows perfectly does it feel jarring at all uh all three yes yes <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, yes to everything yes to everything it's so weird how there's just so many tonal shifts in the movie mm-hmm. and they i mean they spike up and down yeah. and, you know it, it's just all over the place but it makes it work somehow mm-hmm. it's a it's a thing where it's like it's it is so smooth how it switches from the comedy to melodrama and from the thriller to the comedy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's also a thing where i'm like wow that is a 180 turn and like, it does it it just does it mm-hmm. it doesn't look back you know and there's it, no warning the tra- signs you're just mm-hmm. you know no you're warning. thrown into it and the transitions are perfectly made cuz basically the transitions f- like from one to the next is the scene in the chapel and the storm. Yeah. And both of those are just done really, really well. Him breaking down in the chapel and her kind of realizing that like, he is truly sorrowful about what he, I mean, he didn't do it, but. And her husband is still in there. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's, it's one of those things where it's done so well that I'm surprised the film didn't get like the best actor nod as well. Mm-hmm. You know, it uh, that's also something interesting, right? Okay, so Jana Gaynor won best actress for this, right? Yeah. I think back then it was a like a cumulative Oscar, so every movie you were in that year counted. Okay. But it's like, do you think she is the best performance in the movie? I think I'd probably give it to him. To uh, George O'Brien, I think is yeah, his name. I'd probably give it to George. Georgie. Yeah, yeah George O'Brien. Although, oh, here's man, the thing, God. though, is that uh, because this is like um, one of those, like, it's a silent movie, right? Or, well, mostly silent. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically. Um, the acting is almost like theater acting, yeah. where it's played up a lot. It's not as bad as I've seen in other silent films, where it gets, like, really over the top. Metropolis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> does that happen in Metropolis? Yeah. Well, I think oh, you're yeah. talking about, like, Charlie Chaplin movies, because I know, you, what is it, Modern Times you weren't a fan of? Yeah, I wasn't really b- that big of a fan of Modern Times. I don't remember what exactly I didn't like about it, but... It was the Hitler you know, stash. <laughs> no. Oh, but, yeah, sometimes what happens in these movies is that, you know, uh, most of these people came from theater mm-hmm. because, you know, it's not like they've been filmed for, like, 700 years or whatever. Yeah. So they came from theater, and they kind of act that very over the top, and George does it more than, what's her name? Janet Gaynor. George does it more than Janet. So I think, 
you know, even though George does give like a really good performance and you can feel his, you can really feel his inner, inner turmoil, mm-hmm. him breaking apart, you mm-hmm. know, inside. But Janet is much more of a subtle act that mm-hmm. she puts on, which is more modern and pre- I mean, forward uh, facing for the time. But I think George, I would probably still give it to George, even though it's a little overdone. Mm. Well, it's the thing with the style of the film is it's, you know, it it's made by Murnau. Murnau's German, and he was making films in the German expressionistic style. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even the acting was also expressionistic. He was going for, you know, the emotions need to be able to be read, you know, through just like the visual work. So, mm-hmm. you know. When you're sad, be really sad. When you're happy, be really happy. You really play up your emotions. Be big. And also, like, this, the way the film looks, right? I think yeah. one of the first images of the movie when the woman of the city is coming out and how it's composed, where I'm like, okay, now there's just this giant fuck-off lamp just up in the top corner, and it's tilted in a way. Mm-hmm. And the old man and the wife that's running this little house the whole table is tilted yes. in a weird angle. And then she's walking out and she's like on a level plane. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that is a really weird composition that you had to build to get that mm-hmm. effect to work. Right. Yes. I mean, it's like every but time it they, cool. they go to um, the man, the or yeah, the man and the wife's uh, house in their bedroom, there's like a ramp up to the door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also when they're, when she's lying in bed, there's that giant, um, there's the shadow that casts in and it almost puts like a cross over the, her bed. Mm-hmm. And it's a thing where, you know, like the shadows and stuff that are used in German expressionism and those deep angles, that's the stuff that's going to influence like noir later on. Yes. Right. And it's interesting, like the beginning of this with it's suspenseful, it's dark, it's moody. That's almost like the precursor of American noir films mm-hmm. that are come in in the thirties and forties mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And it's also just a thing where the I, I don't I don't, I forgot where I was going with this honestly <laughs> I just wanted to talk about how cool uh, this movie looked I mean Murnau was just kind of a little ahead of his time with this one yeah yeah honestly oh now I remember uh, uh the performances yeah yes yeah I think the whole tone of the movie and the way the movie is made and how it looks it's that German expressionist style through the American studio system mm-hmm. which I think is something that was just like set set the stage for what is going to come later on with you know like the film culture that's going to follow right Mm -hmm. because german expressionism was a response to world war Mm one you know and the german depression all that stuff and what happens in america in the 30s we get our depression and what rises up is pulp fiction noir stories detective Mm -hmm. stories and that's Mm -hmm. like it's it's all like this is a precursor to what's going to come follow later god damn yeah murnau was ahead of his time like way ahead of his time it's Uh, kino it is Kino. 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 But but speaking of Kino, um, Murnau also directed Nosferatu, he right? Did. I believe everyone likes to point at Nosferatu as that's the movie he'll be remembered for, his best movie, whatever. But I, I want to ask you this, Becky, because you know you like vampire fiction a lot. It's true, yeah. But but is Sunrise better than Nosferatu? Ooh, it just feels like two very you know two very different worlds. It's hard to. I mean, they were uh, made on different continents, correct? Yes, yes different were. continents, different companies. Uh, one had Aleister Crowley as a producer. Really? Nosferatu had Aleister Crowley as a producer? Um, Albin Growl, who was the producer of Nosferatu, was a founding member of the Brotherhood of Saturn, yeah. which is also the same one that um, Aleister Crowley founded that yes. later turned into modern-day Satanism. Mm-hmm. And Aleister Crowley was basically a non-named producer on it he put the money into it yeah also he was banned from germany when they went to go see the edit hmm. yeah yeah that is he went to the editing room for nosferatu and got banned from germany for the things he did in the editing bay what that is i don't know but he was banned from germany after i see the more you know the more you know that was a little shooting star uh, yeah i think we all got that <laughs> yeah we got that I don't, I don't except he didn't do the tone for the more you know no. thank you yeah so you just think you don't want to, you know, they're say. Not, I mean, they are very different. Yeah. What else has Murnau done that you know maybe you two have watched? Uh, it's probably just that. it's probably just those two, yeah. which is like it, it sucks because so many of his movies are lost. Well, what is the one that everybody says is like his best one? The Last Laugh. That the one I am laugh. planning on watching very very soon, especially after rewatching one. this. Apparently, it's like fantastic. Yeah, you keep saying that uh, everybody says like it's better than this, and I'm like. 
better than sunrise you're just like, like bitch where's my know. receipts yeah where's the receipts <laughs> i need to check this out myself uh, but yeah um any more thoughts on sunrise a song of two humans i mean i think it's just a, a real timeless movie i mean even the beginning of the movie the initial like a uh, what are they called title cards mm-hmm. the initial title cards explains to the audience that this could happen to anyone at any time it is a completely timeless um story that will flow through um the years through the eons you know the the man the woman the other woman the man coming back to his wife it's the messy story of infidelity and mm-hmm. love that will never change we're we're in 2024 and people are still having affairs people still you know have these ideas well, to kill off their spouse and <laughs> run away with the I, other I, woman I, dateline has shown uh, yeah. i feel like the like the real story of the the movie which is like you know one of those like uh gag me barf like so <laughs> bad is that you know love conquers all yes true is it, love <laughs> conquers all is this the first movie love to never put never dies in, oh, oh my no. lord i can hear Ciel. yes i know that's why i'm like i gotta drop that one for her Phantom of the Opera. Uh, but yeah, I really, I really do enjoy this movie. It's one of those movies that I think is still a film you can draw inspiration from. It's one of those movies where I'm like, fuck, maybe we should have stayed in the silent era a little bit longer or still kept some of those techniques because it, this movie is still kind of like on a on a different curve than even modern filmmaking is on. Mm-hmm. And modern storytelling's on. It's really just a wonderful film. Agreed. I mean, I really liked it. Um, I can't wait to watch it again and, you know, really pick up on more of the things that I maybe didn't see in that first go of it. But, yeah, that's like what we would have been saying with the Marvel movies, you know. They kind of lost being special. We need filmmaking where it's like you actually feel emotions. You know, work on the actual artistry of film, you know. The shadows, or is that just, you know, because we're cinema people. We like, you know, movies and we like... Oh, that's a cool shot right there. Oh, that's cool. I see what they're referencing. But well, yeah, I, I think the uh, the expressionist way about it has really been lost to mm-hmm. time. That the really like feeling the emotions of the characters. Yeah, I mean, a lot of movies get like the cheap tug on the heartstrings mm-hmm. type of stuff, but. This I'm, movie, you still cry at Forrest Gump. Don't you give me that bullshit? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a sad they, movie. the I, cheapest well, okay. heartstring pull of all time. It, okay, that heartstring pull probably cost them millions of dollars, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, they they didn't just pull on the heartstrings. They gra- they set up that whole movie for that one scene. Yes, and they gra- like a chokehold, like on that the woman from the city, <laughs> and pulled on those heartstrings. Hey, but, La La Land made you cry. Eh, it made a lot of people cry. But I mean, like this. You cried at Guardians too. Calm down. (laughs) Don't give me that look. Did I cry at Guardians too? Yes, you did. You cried in my arms. Maybe I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) Anyway, but like the uh, the movie really has you feel emotions throughout the whole movie. Mm -hmm. You go on this journey with them constantly. It's not just like a pull here and a pull there. It's kind of a building of suspense. You're and riding those you're, waves with them. Yeah, you're riding. Mm-hmm. I mean, waves. You know, the yeah. imagery of the yeah. lake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Pulling the heartstrings, but they're not pulling. They're kind of strumming the heartstrings, getting a song going. Oh, Two God. humans. <laughs> Please. <laughs> mm. Metaphors. Mine is much more subtle. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I go for the cheap seats. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I'm guessing overall, would recommend Sunrise. Oh, Absolutely. definitely. And it's short, too. It's like, what, 90 minutes? Yeah, it's like 91 minutes, I think. I mean, also, it's one of those movies that it's old enough. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it kind of anywhere. And I watched it on Tubi. Yep, Tubi mm-hmm. as well. It's also a movie that I'm like, you people, please like watch this movie and get a hold of it. It almost got lost to history in a studio fire. So, like, please. In New Jersey. In in fucking New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. In New Jersey. In Jersey. I don't trust Jersey anymore. <laughs> I mean, the... the I, it's really cliche because they literally say it in the movie is that it is a timeless type of movie, you know, and it really shows that movies from the 20s could have been so much so ahead of their time, even though they're so early on in the lifespan mm. of cinema. It's like what we talked about last week with Metropolis, how Metropolis is themes and all that. It's, it's a breathing film because its themes are so 
big and broad. Yeah. But it's like every time you revisit it, it's like, oh, these are still like the same struggles of class and things we're going through. Politics. Yeah. And this is like, oh, this is the same thing where it's a breathing film, but it's breathing in like human nature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, everyone should watch more silent films. Well, I didn't say that. Well, at least mm-hmm. Sunrise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just Sunrise. I mean, I'm, I don't know of any other silent films I'd really recommend. The Artist. The the That one, well, you were alive when that one came out. Really? It was like 2008. Holy crap. Somewhere there, yeah. Yeah. It won like five Oscars. It did. But yeah. Wow. Uh, but yeah, that is that is Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans. And that's also the conclusion of Silent Film Month. <gasps> I'm on the last episode. You, you are. are. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sorry to kill another podcast. It happens every, <laughs> just every R. I. P. fucking time. <laughs> Randy showed up and just choked the podcast. <laughs> it's like, ah! <laughs> what if this podcast drowned? <laughs> oh, yes, dude. Um, <laughs> just me and Dean dramatically falling out of the boat. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, um, was it next week? Is next week a week off? Or are we going right into into a new month? You got to decide that for us. Jesus Christ. Okay. Well. I be- he's not here to decide for you either. <laughs> wow. Okay, no, next, uh, that's right, next week we are starting a new month, because the 1st of February is on a Thursday. Uh, and next month we're going to be going on from a genre to an actor. That's right, we're going to be focusing on Johnny Depp. Ooh, yes. really? Yes, we are, because uh, he is one of, he's a very interesting car- or career arc for an actor, because he starts out as like, teen heartthrob mm-hmm. goes on to like indie darling to hollywood character actor to biggest star in hollywood for a while mm-hmm. and then to tabloid sensation with one of the funniest court cases of the last oh 20 years God. i can't wait to watch the the documentary on netflix no, it should, should that be the last episode of the month <laughs> oh, i'd be down no. <laughs> okay but um we're gonna start off with i believe it's his film debut yeah, his, uh, it, his first film debut, feature film. It, it's a little indie film. A little I indie film. I don't film. know if anybody's heard of it. No, probably not. It's called uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, God. Yeah, a real I tiny forgot. film. <laughs> yeah, so really excited to do that one. Should have a guest on that week. Yes. Uh, but if they wanted to watch it, listen to it, where can they go? Well, if they want to listen to it, they can follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. And eventually YouTube. That's right. Eventually YouTube. Eventually YouTube. (laughs) Because where are we this month on YouTube? We are closing in on actually syncing up our release dates with YouTube on our YouTube channel, The Film Vault. That is The Film Vault on YouTube, where we upload slideshow video versions of this podcast. Uh, But yeah, I believe the most recent one I released was Seven Samurai. That was last summer. Quiet you. (laughs) I'm, He's I'm working on it. I'm basically at this point, I'm just releasing like three or four episodes like every week to try and catch up. I remember it caught me off guard because I get the alerts whenever we have a, a new YouTube video posted, mm-hmm. and it was gentlemen prefer blondes, and I was like, that was musical March. March? <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. He's I'm, working on I'm it. I'm working. Man. It's a slow process. I'm working here. I'm working here. But yeah, go there, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Um, and you can also follow us on our social medias to find out what we're doing at the Film Club Podcast on Instagram, where we post our daily stories, upcoming episodes, and random adventures we go on. And Randy, would you like to plug anything? Maybe the streams you're watching, the guilds you're in, the games you're playing. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna plug our guild in WoW, <laughs> but uh, you know, I got a 99 yesterday. Let's go. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I don't really have anything to plug. Then. With that, we'll see you next week at the film club. Have a good week, everybody. I've held more Oscars than Dean Will in his life. (laughs) I hate you so much.